Well, my guest now is a man who loves to train men to fight. <laughs> he says many men are in the fight of their lives and don't even recognize the danger or the enemy. His book, Fight, the latest in his God's Man series, helps to equip men to engage in strategic warfare in order to ensure God's victory in life. His name is Kenny Luck, and he's the founder and president of Everyman Ministries, and he serves as the men's pastor at Rick Warren's Saddleback Church in California. Kenny, welcome Ron, to 100 Healthy Street. it's great to be Street. with you. Thank it you so much. It's wonderful to have you here. It's great. Now, I can just uh, almost see women out there scrambling for the remote and, and thinking, I don't think this is for me. <laughs> are, are they right? Uh, no, it is very much for them. It, it's all of our task as believers. In fact, in this book, I've gotten more feedback from women, our warrior sisters out there who are engaged. As a believer, we're all engaged in the fight. So all of us, men and women, uh, need to be able to face the reality of evil, discern it, and engage it. So uh, ladies, please don't uh, grab the remote. This is for you. Okay. I, I love the uh, subtitle, which is a question. Are you willing to pick a fight with evil? Uh, so. What are you really talking about here? Well, it, it has to do with um, you know ignorance and incompetence and laziness when it comes to our understandings and dealings with a very um, a very real thing that Jesus spoke of versus um, proactive uh, engagement of what's going on. So when I say, are you willing to pick a fight with evil? It's about being proactive, intelligent, intentional versus reactive. And as the Bible talks about in the scriptures, Satan is out there like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. And if you know you're on someone's menu, that should raise your, mm. your threat level mm. uh, a little bit. And um, when you're unaware, the Bible says you're outwitted and, and it, it re results in some devastation and, and, and eating in a, in a parable sense uh, uh, by the enemy of the believer. Mm. You know, we hear uh, you know different threat levels uh, mm -hmm. that are that are out there with right. uh, you know at the airport or whatever. Mm -hmm. It's a yellow, it's an orange, mm -hmm. it's a red, or uh, so. Th there's really uh, in the spiritual sense yes. also that there there's different levels people need to be aware of and and how they're suscept susceptible to. Well, that, yeah. yeah, and many just don't even recognize that there's anything happening at all. I think that, and that's where I start in the book. It's just facing the reality of evil and getting uh, an understanding of evil by the one who understands it's the best, Jesus Christ. When he was talking about the, the parable of the weeds and the tares and how uh, while the weed is growing, the weeds are present. And uh, the servants of the master saying, hey, should we pull them up now? And he says, no, they're gonna be there. So it's just facing that reality that it's a mixed bag until he returns, that this time on earth, that there is a ruler of this present world, that there is evil 24 seven all around us, and that we have a big red target on us by the very fact that we name the name uh, of Christ and understanding the relationship between evil, your identity in Christ and its designs upon you and, and the predictable patterns that evil takes at you. If you're not aware of that, mm. the apostle Paul said to the Corinthians, you will be outwitted because you are unaware of Satan's schemes. Mm. Some might, might say, well, you know, we, we shouldn't have any problem at all with, with evil because I'm, I, in relationship with the Lord and, and I'm, I feel, I read my Bible and I, I pray and, and it's not an issue with me, I'm okay. Right, it, it's, that, it's that understanding of, well, you know, I'm in Christ, he, he secured the victory for me at the cross, my sins are forgiven, he's coming back, I'm going to heaven. But Jesus said to his disciples who are going to remain after he left, I'm sending you out as sheep among wolves, not sheep among squirrels or rabbits <laughs> or, or hamsters. And, and the admonition was to be shrewd as a serpent and innocent as a dove. And so as we, what we need to understand is that yes, in, there is an age to come, but in this age, the Bible says that Satan is the ruler of this mm. present world. We are like special forces deployed and on mission, even as the son of man was. And so we have to be very aware, alert, sober, and understand what our mission is, how to come against the forces mm. that are against us and get trained and equipped with a level of humility that respects the evil's crafty ability to take mm -hmm. us down. So what is the main battleground then the men are in? Well, I think it's, it, it's not on a physical external level, it's really on an internal cognitive, mental, emotional level. And that's what we talk about in the book is that, um, you know, there's just life and Jesus said there would be tension and trouble in this world, but take courage, I've overcome the world. Um, where I don't believe, um, Ron, that every uh, negative event that happens uh, means that there's an evil component to it, it's just life. 
Um, this is a fallen world, uh, mm -hmm. relationships, uh, we, we are sinful, and so there are a lot of events. But evil is very invested in the heart issues and emotions uh, that go along with the events of life. And we learn this by just reading the Gospels, Luke chapter 4, when Jesus is isolated, fatigued, emotionally, spiritually low. When does Satan come? Mm. That's when he comes. And, and equally in the successes, where if he can get us to act like him and embezzle God's glory and attach to our own success uh, and make ourselves like God, um, he can equally take a person down there. So the battle for men, women, all believers um, has to do with our heart and our attachments, mm. our emotions, and how we filter life, and then knowing that that is when the lion pounces. The lion pounces when we are vulnerable, either through success or through loss and trauma. Hmm. Now, you, you say that before we even entered this fight, we need to uh, look and see where, as you say, we discern the darkness in our own heart. Yeah. Uh, what do you mean by that? Well, you know, Jesus uh, fired one across the bow of his disciples, and he said to them, uh, don't um, let the light you think you have uh, be made darkness. And he, ad he admonished the disciples, let there be no dark corners in your life. And this has to do with what some of the audience might uh, refer to as footholds, um, whether those are uh, emotional or uh, footholds of character that are there. Uh, the idea is um, that we don't want to have areas of our lives where we're uh, allowing darkness while we're trying to fight darkness. It's where um, we can have a compartmentalized area of our lives that is away from God's authority and leadership in our lives. And then to be able to think that we could then go and proactively deal with evil on a, on a, on a aggressive, proactive level when we're trafficking evil in our own hearts and not mm. under the authority. I use the parable of night vision, that in order to have night vision, you have to have ambient light. You have to have the light of the character of Christ in your own life. And so um, those passages of the Bible and those admonitions of Scripture not just to be a hearer of the word, but a doer of the word, those admonitions that call us out of selective obedience and compartmentalization to total lordship and commitment to Christ, where we are uh, not harboring darkness as a way of life in any area of our life, whether that's 90, 10, 80, 20, because if we traffic darkness, Satan and evil are free to be where the darkness is. And so that's why you see this malaise among many believers where parts of their lives are not under the authority of the Lord and they've compartmentalized it away. They are giving permission to mm -hmm. evil, Satan, and demonic oppression in their lives because they're allowing darkness. So yes, the first step in all of this is to look in